Thank you. Hi everybody and welcome to our day at the Space Centre. The first building we went into today was the Heroes and Legends building, otherwise known as the Astronaut Hall of Fame. The first thing you see when you go into the building is a pre-show. Once you finish with the pre-show, you go into the 3D experience. The 3D experience is absolutely fantastic. We didn't film it because the camera just really doesn't do it justice. I've seen it a few times and it blows me away every single time. You're the most helpless creature in the world. On the end of a string floating at zero gravity in space. He was huffing and puffing. And he got a heck of a time holding his body. He brought to the end of this 25 foot tail. And then boom, he torqued his face. When we left the Heroes and Legends building we walked straight on into the rocket gap. There are quite a few different rockets on display and it's quite spectacular. The one that steals the show is the Saturn 1B, that's the biggest rocket in the gap and had been intended for use on a Skylab mission. The command and service module for this particular rocket is on display in the Saturn V Center, which you'll see later on. Idiots. No, you just look like idiots. <laughs> <laughs> You're just jumping on sports. You're generating electric, actually. Ready? Silent mode, so we don't have cell phones disrupting the tour. And uh, thank you for helping me with that. Now our tour today will take us out to the Apollo Saturn V Center, about a 40 minute ride. On the way we're going to be driving around the vehicle assembly building. Travel for centuries. The more we learn about our universe, the more questions we have. Today, we'll explore where NASA and its partners are taking us in the future. But before we begin this journey, just like every NASA mission, that is some hydraulic compact of sand that can support all the weight. And then once we're there, we'll drop it all off. And a few days later, there'll be a launch. We'll come back, we'll pick the mobile launcher up, and we'll bring it back to the VAB. To carry it inside the vehicle assembly building where the shuttle stack was then built on top. This platform is now being modified by Northrop Grumman for their new rocket. Now there's a second mobile launch platform we're coming up on just ahead of us. This one is still having the space shuttle configuration on top, unlike the one we just... Also off to your right, you see that rock roadway over there. That is the crawler pathway they're talking about in the video that leads from the vehicle assembly building all the way out to the launch pads. Sure, the crew access arm is one of the last major modifications to the mobile launcher in preparation for SLS and Orion. Each pathway while the rock and that platform straddle that grass area in between. Again, taking anywhere from six to eight hours to make this trip from the vehicle assembly building out to the launch pads. As beautiful rockets 
SpaceX expertly lands many of their rocket boosters after launch. Sometimes they land back here at Cape Canaveral, while others may land on an autonomous drone ship floating in the ocean. The ability to recover and reuse rocket boosters is one of the most exciting developments in the aerospace industry in recent years. This advance in rocket technology is helping we build because we use horizontal integration for the rocket. And uh, the other big thing that we've done is we've had to convert the pad from what's called a mobile launcher pad concept where rockets assembled on a pad or in the space shuttle is working on and rolled here with all of its support equipment to uh, the is for the Atlas V rockets. To the right of that, the next set of four towers is Pad 40, also used by SpaceX for their Falcon 9 rocket. And to the right of that is Pad 37 that's used for the Delta IV rockets. crawler has hydraulics that keeps the platform, tower, and rocket perfectly level while it makes that climb to the top. Launch Control Center. The upcoming video is going to tell you more about that building as we make our way back up in that direction. what a launch director does and the important work that's being done here at LCC. It's my pleasure and I hope all of our guests enjoy your day and exploring the mystery. White object with the rounded end, that's a model of the launch abort system that will go right on top of the Orion capsule. That would be used to pull the capsule and crew away from the rocket. The Moon Tree Garden and the statue was installed to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11. We had a good look round the garden and then decided to give the show a miss. When normally when you walk in the Saturn V Centre you see a show, you go into the firing room and they launch Apollo 8. It's really good to watch if you haven't seen it before. We've seen it quite a few times so we decided to go in the side and do it this time. You're looking at the first stage of a Saturn V rocket. The five Rocket 9 F1 engines on stage one produce 7.7 .7 million pounds of thrust. They burned for around two and a half minutes and took the rocket to an altitude of 38 miles. When the Saturn V had reached this altitude and all the propellant in stage one had been burnt, it separated from the rest of the rocket and fell away and burnt up in Earth's atmosphere. At this point, five rocket dying J2 engines on the second stage would take over. They burnt for around six minutes and took the vehicle up to 115 miles in altitude. <laughs> the lunar module that's on display at the Saturn V Center, LM9, was originally intended to fly on Apollo 15. It didn't fly on Apollo 15 because the lunar module was replaced with one that could carry the lunar rover. Yeah. Commercial 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> should do a better one. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's way better. Yeah, proper yeah, pictures. I don't want to see that on America's Most
Yes. Well, this is a NASA product, I suppose, isn't it? <laughs> Are you happy with that? It's gonna be. I'm with your dad. Twice. <laughs> Why is that so? <laughs> your dad's twice. There's two of them. Why is that face so close? There's two of them. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Beat the bugs. Take a picture at Sky for me. <laughs> Yeah, we did do. You don't get many skies like that in uh, Leeds. No. <laughs> no, it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, it's a Lee Mack thing. Oh, Lee Mack thing. <laughs> 